Hey everyone and welcome to this video about how you can build acoustic panels for less than 50 bucks and we're talking four acoustic panels for that price. It's actually really simple which is super confusing because when you go and look on Tourman or like other music stores they are pretty expensive like one acoustic panel can easily cost you 50 bucks if not a lot more. It's insane how much you save when you make them yourself. I simply just decided to make a wooden frame out of uh, some really cheap chipboard from a local uh, merchant here in Denmark um, where I live. I chose to go with secondhand wood because that would be even cheaper and it's also way better for the environment. After getting your hands on some chipboard or some plywood or like any other kind of, kind of wood that you would like to use to make these panels, then you need to cut them out in a specific size and when you're making it yourself you have the option of choosing what kind of size you want and a pro tip is to go with the size of the standard um, rock wool uh, like industry sizes because that way you don't have to cut the rock wool and I don't know if you tried it but when you touch rock wool your hands get all itchy and like even though you are like wearing gloves it's it gets all over the place and just feels very uh, not nice. <laughs> so the less we can handle the rock wool, the better. And the industry size for the rock wool bats is 600 times 960 millimeters. So keep that in mind when making your frame. And then one really important thing when you're making acoustic panels is to think about uh, the depth of the material that you put inside the panels. You don't want it to be too thin because then the base absorption will not be as effective. So you need to find it like a sweet spot. I found that the Rockwell bats with a depth of 96 millimeters does the best job of absorbing the lower frequencies. So that's the size I went for. And for building the frame, I made it really, really, really easy. Okay, no more slow mo, okay, okay. Let's, let's do some work. I simply made a frame out of four pieces of chipboard. I didn't even go for like any fancy corner pieces to make the whole frame more rigid. But I added a centerpiece though, just to make it a little bit more stable. If you decide to go with chipboard, just be aware that it can crack a bit easily. Uh, at least from my experience with the cheap ass chipboard that I got. But it's a great material because it is cheap and you don't have to look at it because we are gonna put some fabric on top of everything. Oh. Speaking about fabric. The fabric that I got, I got super, super cheap, which is like the cheapest of all cheap. I got it for free. It's free real estate. There's a whole ocean of just fabrics, like all over the place. So if you can, try to, try to source out some of that free fabric from like textile factories or actually just private people who just has a lot of it. It could be bed sheets, it could be curtains, it could, it could be a lot of things. One thing to make sure though, you want some light fabric that the sound waves can easily travel through and get to the rock wool and get to the rock wool where the absorption is happening. But that's a hard one. One thing that you need to do though when you have your fabric and I know it can feel a bit tedious but you have to iron it because if there is some kind of folding lines going down your fabric when you're all done don't like cheapskate that part and if you can then get yourself an iron with uh, steam that's gonna look super nice okay and finally you're gonna take your fabric and put it on the floor and then take your frame and put it on top and place your rockwell bats inside um, try to place the frame and the rockwell bats like in the middle of the fabric just approximately doesn't have to be perfect and then it's time to fold the fabric around the frame then you need a staple gun to clip it all together is it called clips together you know what i mean i'm gonna say clips for the rest of the video be sure with every single clips that you put in to stretch out the fabric and make it really snug and then the only thing you need to do now is to fix those corners. And there is a lot of different ways to make those corners look nice by folding the fabric. I'm just a lucky guy to have a textile designer as my girlfriend. 
So she, uh, she did it for me. And here's a video how she did it. So now you're done, unless you want to make some slats. As you can see behind me, I made some slat walls to cover up my acoustic panels. I really like the look of this. It's also really practical because you can hang hooks on them and use that for storage or decoration or whatever you want. They are made out of some plywood that I also use to build my desk. And if you want to see that video about how I build my desk, it's up here in the top right. So, here is how you build some slats. You need to build them in the same height as the acoustic panels. And then you want to cut out some 28 millimeter wide uh, wood pieces. For each of my slat walls here, I cut out 12 pieces to fill up the entire width of the acoustic panel. And I made the space between the wooden slats the same as the wooden slats themselves. So, it's 28 millimeters of wood and 28 millimeters of space. And then you simply want to cut some vertical wood pieces to go behind the slat walls. And that is simply it. It takes a lot of precision to make these slats look really nice. And I'm really not the guy to make like precise woodwork. You can check that out in this video to see that I'm yeah, that is true. So I got some help from my neighbor to make it look straight. And when you have so many slats next to each other, that's actually pretty important. Because of his help, the slats don't aesthetically hurt when you look at them. And I'm very glad about that. This is gonna be a long night. And that's basically it. Now you got yourself some acoustic panels and you got yourself some beautiful slat walls to put in front. And in my experience, sound absorption wise, the slats don't really make a difference. It works great in this space, which is actually a garage. We got some pretty good acoustic treatment going on here. It sounded like this before. You can actually download the blue. <laughs> If you want, you can download the blueprint for how to build these acoustic panels and the slat walls uh, down in the description. It's free, there is no email sign up, there is no nothing, just a Google Drive link and then you can just go crazy. And now that we are finished, here's the price breakdown. As you can see, it costs less than 50 bucks to make four acoustic panels and it basically doesn't cost much more to make a couple extra acoustic panels if you need, maybe for a cloud in the ceiling or something. It's pretty cheap. We don't need to use our hard-earned money as musicians and sound designers on like studio interior stuff. Instead, we can use our money on good speakers, nice headphones, and for me, like some nice cymbals and some good drums. I think that's just way better. Anyway, that's just my two cents about acoustic panels. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. That will help me out a lot. And you can check out the link in the top right to see how I made my desk and also how I made the entire space here. Thanks a lot again for watching and I will catch you hopefully in the next video. Peace out.